Hello, in this video tutorial you are going to learn how to enable remote desktop on Windows Server 2012 by searching Sami Power by tech.pdecrest.com. In this tutorial you are going to learn three things. How to enable remote desktop on the system, connect to another system using remote desktop connection and how to restrict access to remote desktop connection using the Windows Firewall. Log on to Windows Server 2012 machine with an administrative rights. Let me type down my very secret password. Okay. And here is the server manager which opens automatically when you log in. Let's close this one and go to start. On the start, right click on computer and from the menu select properties. On the properties, click on remote settings. This will bring up the menu for remote assistance and remote desktop. On remote desktop, the first option is already selected. Do not allow remote connection to this computer. I will select the second option, allow remote connection to this computer. This will automatically enable the exception in the firewall for remote connections. Now click OK. Now if you see here, the network level authentication is selected. Network level authentication completes user authentication before establishing remote desktop connection and the login screen appears. This is a more secure authentication method that can protect the remote computer from miscellaneous users and miscellaneous softwares. You can use network level authentication if your clients are using Windows XP Service Pack 3, Windows Vista, Windows 7 or Windows 8. Now as our scenario we are going to select network level authentication and now we are going to add a user. To add a user I will click on select user. Now users listed below can connect to this computer and any member of administrative group can connect to this computer even if they are not listed here. Here it says administrator already has access. So this means you do not need to add the administrator as it already had a permission to access this computer remotely. So let's click on add advanced and from here find now. From here I am going to select a user which I have created in our previous tutorial that is Peter Kreis. Let's check it out where it is. Yeah, here it is. Let's select it and click OK. 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 Apply. And OK. Now let's close this one. Now there are two ways to give a user a permission to access the system remotely. One you have already seen. The other one I'm just going to show you. Let's go to server manager on the server manager let's go to tools from the tools click on computer management on computer management go to local user and groups on the group click on remote desktop users I can directly add users from here and the user will have the permission to access the server remotely so let's click cancel close this and also close this one now let's check it out the IP address of the server as I don't remember it right click on the network adapter icon and click on open network and sharing center from here click on Ethernet click on details here you will see the IP that is 192.168.1.100 this is a local IP address you can assign a LAN adapter a publicly accessible IP address so that the users can access the server from anywhere in the world now let's go to the client machine which is Windows 7 and check it out what happens when we access this system uh, just wait for a moment okay here we are on Windows 7 machine let me show you the properties of this system first this is Windows 7 ultimate edition service pack 1 let's close this okay now before we start let's check it out the IP address of this system to check out the IP address right click on the LAN adapter icon and click on open network and sharing center from there click on local area connections click on details so the IP address of this system is 192.168.1.122 let's close this and close this and close this too now let's connect to a remote computer which we have earlier configured First we have to open the remote desktop connection window by using this simple command which is MSTSC Milk Sierra Tango Sierra Charlie. So let's click enter and as you can see the remote desktop connection window has opened. 
let's type down the IP address of the remote system 10 oops not 10 it is 1 okay 192.168.1.100 that is 100 okay now let's click on connect okay now it is prompting me for username and password as you can see this is a network level authentication which we have earlier configured this is more secure and robust let's type down the username that is Peter Kreis and the password which is really very secret I'm not going to tell you now here you have a checkbox which will remember your credentials so that next time when you try to connect to the remote computer it won't ask password from you click on ok this pops up a warning window the identity of the remote computer cannot be verified do you want to connect anyways the remote computer could not be authenticated due to the problem with the security certificate now this error occurs due to the certificate is not valid if you click on view certificate you will see the certificate is not assigned by a valid certification authority so let's click ok and click yes which will now proceed to connect to a remote computer here we are we have successfully connected to a remote computer now let's check it out as you can see this is Sachin instead of Peter Christ it is showing Sachin it is because the name of the user is Sachin and the login ID is Peter Christ now as you can see I can literally do anything whatever I want as I'm sitting on my local system I can go to LAN adapter and check out the IP address configuration of this system as you can see the class C IP address I'm using okay close this let's check it out few more stuff if I double click on this blue bar it will automatically restore down and then I double click on it it will be maximized I can slide this forward back anywhere where I want I can also hide this connection bar by clicking on this button as you can see the connection bar has been hidden now if I move the mouse on the top it will automatically reappear okay now let's do one thing let's go back to our local system uh, let's uh, sign out first from here to sign off let's go to start and let's click on search in and sign out and we are back on our local Windows 7 machine now I have already told you how to open the RDP window using run now let me show you how you can open the RDP window from the start menu ok you can open it from here or if you don't find it there you will find it into all program into all programs go to accessories and there you will find remote desktop connection as you can see here whenever user connects to the server it creates a session let me show you what is the session now let's connect back to that remote machine ok click yes and now I have connected now this is basically a user session let me open something ok now what I'm going to do I will just disconnect the disconnect it from server and now the session is still running but I have disconnected from the server if I reconnect to that server I will get back my session and all the programs which I have opened will remain open and running ok let's close this and let's go back to our local system sign out ok now let's see other features of remote desktop connection open remote desktop connection window click on options ok let's go to start and click on computer here you can see I have one drive here which is C drive and there is some data let's close this now let's click on the display tab which is here you can adjust the screen resolution of the remote desktop window from here local resources you can see printer and clipboard is already selected now let's click on more here you will see drive let's select port and here are drive now I can share my local drives with remote computers by selecting this option let's say I want to share my local drive which is C with the remote server I have also selected the plug and play devices and now let's click OK now let's check the program tab 
Here you can specify a specific program to run when you connect to a remote server. On the experience tab, there are multiple options are available depending on your network speed. Now here you will see there is an option reconnect if the connection is dropped. That means if the local network or an internet connection is dropped, it will try to reconnect the session for some time. Now let's check it out the advanced tab. Server authentication. Now if you see here, there are three options. Connect and don't warn me, warn me and don't connect. So if you select the first option, it won't give you a warning sign when you connect, which we have shown you earlier. I will keep the default option selected, which is warn me. And if you select the third option and the certificate is not valid, it will give you an error. Okay, let's come back to resources, more and C drive is selected. Let's go back to the general tab. If you select this checkbox, it will always ask password whenever you connect to the remote server. Now let's click on connect. Here you can see it is giving me a warning. Do you trust the remote connection? Remote connection could harm your local or remote computer. Remote desktop connection is giving this warning because we are going to share our local resources with the remote server. Here it is showing what resources we are going to share with the remote server. Use the following credentials to connect. Now let's click on connect. Once I have clicked on connect, it will give the usual warning. The remote server could not be authenticated. Now let's click yes. And here we are. We have connected to the server. Now let's open the file explorer. On the file explorer, let's open the computer. Okay, can you see the computer? I cannot see the computer. Mm, yeah, here it is. Okay, let me click on the computer. There you can see my C drive, E drive, and there is one more drive which is also a C drive. Basically, it is a network drive which is mapped from my local system to this remote system. Let me show you the drives on my local system. As you can see, this is my local system drive. Let Let's create a file with the name of searchin on my local Windows 7 drive. That is S-A-C-H-I-N. And now if you see on my remote server, the file will appear automatically. This is because the drive, local drive has been mapped with the remote server. Now I can copy anything from my local system to remote system and from remote system to my local system. Let's close this. Now let's go back to our Windows 7 machine. Let's sign out. Okay. Till now you have seen how we can connect to the remote server using an IP address of the remote server. Now if you have a domain name which is mapped with the remote server IP address you can also access the remote server with the domain name. As you can see here instead of an IP address just type down the domain name which is mapped with the remote server IP address. In our earlier tutorial we have configured a domain name which is tech.pdcrash.com. So if you want to learn how to configure a DNS, you can see our tutorial on DNS. The link is given below the video. If you just check it out over there. Okay, let's check it out. The drive is still mapped or not. Yes, it is mapped. Click on cancel and click on general tab. Now we are going to connect to the remote server using a domain name. Once again, it is giving me a warning because I am connecting my local drives with the remote server. Now let's click on connect. It is asking me a password which is a network level authentication. Now the password is very secret so I am not going to tell you. Let me type it down. Okay. Oops, looks like I forgot my own password. But that can't be possible. Let me type it down again. Okay. Let me remember it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there is it. The same warning. Let's click yes and here we are connected to the remote server successfully using a domain name that is tech.pdcrash.com. Okay, let me show you the IP address of this system that will be same as the earlier that is that is 192.168.1.100. Let's close this, close this and close this too. Now as you can see here that is tech.pdcrash.com. Okay, let's go back to our local machine that is Windows 7. So let me sign out from here. Okay, and click on sign out. 
So far you have learned how to enable remote desktop and how to connect to the remote system. And now you are going to learn how you can secure a remote server using built-in Windows Firewall. So wait for a moment. Let's switch back to the server machine. Here we are back on our Windows Server 2012 machine. I have logged in as an administrator as you can see here. Now let's open control panel. On the control panel click on categories. Ok click on small icon and here you will find firewall. Let me close this. You can also open firewall from here. Click on firewall. Basically it is the same thing. Now let's click on advanced setting. Now we are on Windows Firewall with advanced security. Let's click on inbound rules. Inbound rule explicitly allow or explicitly block inbound network traffic that matches the criteria in the rule. Now the firewall is a really big concept. I'm just letting you know how you can secure your server by restricting the access using Windows Firewall. Now here you can see an inbound rule with the name of remote desktop user mode TCP in. And below that there is one more rule remote desktop user mode UDP in. We only need to configure remote desktop user mode TCP in. Let's double click on this. On the remote desktop user mode properties you will find there are multiple tabs. Let's select scope tab. On the scope tab you will see two options local IP address and the remote IP address. We are going to configure the remote IP address option. Click on the radio button these IP address only. Click on add. Type down the IP address which you want to allow to access this system. Let's type 192.168.1.133. Click OK. And click apply and click OK. OK, let's minimize this. And close this one. As we don't require it anymore. Now let's go back to our Windows 7 machine. OK. Here we are back on our Windows 7 machine. Now let's try to access our remote server which we have just configured. There is MSTSC and the IP address. Now it is showing connecting to 192.168.1.100. And there is an error. Remote desktop can't connect to the remote computer for one of these error. Let's click OK. Now if you remember we have configured a IP address on the firewall that is 192.168.133. Let's check it out what IP address I am using on my local system. Click on local area connection, properties, internet protocol version 4, properties and here you will see I am using 122 but I have configured on the firewall that is 133. So let's change the IP address and click OK. Close, close. Once again let me show you the IP address. Click on details and here you can see 192.168.133. Let's close this and close this too. Now let's again try to connect to the remote desktop. OK. It is giving me the warning. Click yes. And there. I have successfully connected to the remote server. As you can see here the IP address of the server that is 192.168.100. Let's sign out and go back to our Windows 7 machine. OK. Let's check it out. Will I am able to access the server using the domain name that is tech.ptechcrash.com. Let me first ping this domain name and check it out what IP address it is giving to me. That is 192.168.100 as you can see. Let's close this. And let me click on connect. And here you can see it's giving the warning sign. And I am successfully able to connect using a domain name. OK, let's sign out from the remote server. Sign out. Uh, OK, so this completes our this tutorial of enabling remote desktop. If you like this tutorial, do give the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. This video tutorial is presented by Sachin Sami, powered by tech.pdcrash.com.